What's up guys, welcome back to my channel and in this video, guess what? I'm gonna show you um, how to create a soccer game part one and what um, components your game engine needs to accomplish that. So without further ado, let's begin. Um, this is gonna be part one uh, because developing a soccer game is very, very, very complex and one of the things that you need to uh, get better at is um, understanding artificial intelligence components for your game. Actually, let me bring a really good book that you may want to use uh, for something like this. All right, the two books that I recommend you to go and get if you want to develop a, a soccer game or any other game actually, uh, is this book, Artificial Intelligence uh, for Games. It's a really good book. Um, and this book here, Programming Game AI by Example. Um, I wouldn't just buy only one of only one of them uh, because I've noticed that you know what is covered in this book um, it may not be as well explained as it's covered in the other and the vice versa so I, I would recommend you to get those two books and also this particular website which is incredible um, if you want to develop the AI steering behaviors for your uh, game objects uh, this is the website to go and check out is amazing. Um, I wouldn't have been able to develop an AI system without these uh, three uh, resources. All right, so let's talk about how uh, a game entity in a video game creates the illusion that it is that it is kicking the ball. Well, I do not work at EA and I do not have access to the source code of FIFA, so I figured this out by myself. All right, and how I think it works in those games and how I made it work in mine is that I make use of the uh, armature of the entity and the animation. And what I basically do is a little trick. I link an object that represents the foot. In this case, um, is the red cube that you see in the screen right now. Um, I link that object to one of the bones in the armature of the uh, entity. And what I do is that during the animation, when the animation is playing, I retrieve the position, the space of the bone, and apply that space to the object that represents the foot of the player, in this case, the red cube. Basically, I'm just making the cube follow the bone. That's all what I do during the animation, right? Then, um, what I do next is that at a particular keyframe, let's say at keyframe number two or three, I enable the collision detection between the foot, or the cube, and the soccer ball. And at that particular keyframe, the collision between the foot and the ball is detected, and a force is applied to the ball in the direction of the player's uh, movement. So that's how I do the kick. So. One of the things that you need to have in your game engine is to number one, um, it, it, it is very helpful in these instances to be able to have direct access to each bone in your armature, um, especially the space um, of each bone because you may need it. Um, and then the other thing that you may want to implement in your animation system is to have direct access to the current uh, keyframe that is being played. Uh, it is it is very helpful. Um, so I just said that whenever there's a collision, um, I apply a force to the ball in the direction of the player's movement. But you may be wondering, aren't you already detecting collision and shouldn't the collision detection compute the, um, the impulse force and apply the velocity and the next position to those two objects? And yes, that is correct. In a normal collision detection process, you will let the system compute the final velocity and the position. However, you will notice that in these instances, it will be very hard to control the ball doing that or letting the collision detection do, do its normal thing. So what I do is that aside from having my normal process, I also implemented um, a uh, I basically divided those two processes into just detecting collision and having the ability to turn off the collision uh, resolution. 
So in this case, both the foot, the cube in this case, and the sucker, they are just collision sensors. Uh, they just sense whenever a collision has occurred, and that is all. Um, they, there is no computation for the final velocity, for the impulse force, or anything like that. Uh, so that makes it a, a lot easier because once I know that the ball has collided with the foot, um, then I again I just apply a force in the direction of the player. All right. So as I mentioned, a soccer game requires an AI system, uh, particularly uh, steering behaviors. Uh, in this instance, I'm only using the arrive steering behavior, uh, which basically. Um, chases a target, but it slows down as it approaches the target, in this case, the soccer ball. Um, so that is what's mainly controlling the whole movement of the soccer player in the game as of now. Uh, but aside from the AI steering behaviors, you also need to implement a state machine. Um, and the state machine is not part of a game engine, it's just part of the game. But now I have several uh, different um, states that um, has been applied to the player. For example, uh, there's a state where you pass the ball, where the player dribbles the ball, where he shoots the ball, where uh, he stops the ball. And what I do, I basically combine the state machine uh, and I apply an animation that goes along with the particular change of state. Um, now, there is one thing that you probably uh, may have noticed whenever you play FIFA, but um, a player doesn't change his state whenever you move the joystick or whenever you press a button. It doesn't change the state right away. Uh, what happens is that um, the game waits for the player to be close enough to the ball before those changes uh, happen, before the state change occurs. Um, and that is what basically happens whenever you play FIFA. Um, and, you know, uh, I implemented the same uh, implementations in my game. Um, whenever you press a button, for example, the player doesn't go and uh, change the state to pass the ball. Instead, it waits for it to be close enough to the ball for it to pass you know, for it to change the state. Um, the same thing is that whenever you change the direction by moving the joystick in your controller, um, the player does not change direction right away. Instead, it waits for it to be close to the ball uh, and then it changes direction, which is, you know, which makes the whole game more real uh, because I really hate those games that you change the direction of the player and the ball is like a meter away from the player and you can see that the player changed direction and the ball also changed direction. That doesn't look real at all. So one of the things that you need to um, implement in your game is that you need to make sure that the AI um, works uh, alongside with the, your state machine um, and you know, communicate back and forth that whenever the arrive steering behavior is close enough to the ball, to the target, then the state machine can go ahead and change the state of the player at that moment. Took me a while to figure that out um, because again, I, I hate those video games that do that, but I, I play FIFA every day and one day I kept you know, noticing how do they do that and that's how I actually saw it. All right, so I hope you have found this video helpful. Um, once I have uh, implemented the formation for the whole team, I want to do another video and I want to share with you, you know, some tips and tricks that I have learned um, that hopefully can help you um, as you develop your own game engine for your own game genre, for your own game uh, type. Um, and yeah, so, Thank you so much guys for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also do not forget to join my uh, Discord server. Uh, if you are an indie game engine developer, you may find this helpful. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you next time.